Okay. I can't believe I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do a machina stone. Check it on three. One, two, three. One more time. Machina stone. Check it on three in the back. One, two, three. How about that? Let's... What is it? Yeah, jazz hands for it. Seven. Thank you for getting shaken. One last time. Machina stone. Check it on three. One, two, three. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much. My name is S.D. Eisenberg Fleischman, Shevet Barama. I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, and spent many summers in Camp Stone. Yaakov and I met there working together as Roshay Mosheva and moved to Cleveland, where we worked at Fuqua. I worked at Fuqua Mizrahi School. And after 13 years, we made Aliyah to Efrat and took over as the directors of camp. I think most of you know me also, but those of you that do not, my name is Yaakov Fleischman. I'm Shevet Achdut, Nashir Biachad. And I first came to camp started in 1986 as a young child of a doctor who was famous for giving ludens for all medical problems. I later attended as a camper, then returned on staff, and this coming summer will be our fifth as the director's camp. So I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. I lived in Cleveland, Ohio, and of course New Jersey. Uh, and I now live in Efrat, Israel with our family. Yaakov and I always describe our roles, the directors of Campstone, as a zuchut, a privilege and an honor. And it's with the same zuchut that we stand here today to celebrate the 50th anniversary of our beloved Campstone. We're humbled to be here among so many friends, supporters, alumni, to celebrate an organization whose reach has been so far and wide in its 50 years of life. When we first started talking about the upcoming 50th, we asked the question, what do we want to accomplish with such an amazing milestone, with our celebrations of this milestone? Unequivocally, there were two answers. Number one, we wanted to generate warm, positive, wonderful feelings about camp as individuals around the world reconnect with an institution they love. And we wanted to drastically increase our network of committed alumni. Thank you, okay. Also, just uh, even with microphones, it's a little tough in the back. If we could just get Sheket, that would really help out. Also, by stoneware. I think we're going to shut down the stoneware sales now, and we will sell more clothing later. Okay. Okay, yes. As Esty said, with those goals in mind, we actually held four events over the course of this past year. Okay, one more time, guys. Check it on three. One, two, three. Let's bring it in. Let's bring it in. Okay, it all started last December, actually. We had a Hanukkah campaign where our Tzavet working the phones in both New Jersey, um, New York, and in Israel for 36 straight hours, and in partnership with matching funds from the Weiss family, helped us raise $400,000 from 550 donors. It was unbelievable. The success of that fundraising campaign was the result of hard work by our Tzavet, and of course, tremendous dedication and commitment by our alumni and parent network. So thank you to everyone here who participated, it was only because of your generosity that we reached our goal. And we hope to reach even greater heights in the coming years. Stay tuned for our campaign this winter to raise funds for our brand new swimming pool, the Mirz Hashem. Okay, we then had a winter event that we called 50 at 50, a Shabbat where 50 families from all over the world hosted people in their homes to reminisce about camp and share old memories. The proceeds from all of those dinners also went to help the Campstone Scholarship Fund. And then this past Labor Day, as many of you know who joined us in Cleveland, Ohio, we hosted an event where we honored Maury and Judy Weiss for 50 years of dedication to Camp Stone. Barbecue, paper goods, Mahsan concert, all of it, and over 400 people in attendance. It was really a beautiful tribute to the legacy of Irving Stone. Not that this isn't, how about 700 people showing up tonight to pay tribute to Mahana Stone? Just an unbelievable thing for all the people here, campers, parents, staff members that have made Aliyah and now come to their home. And uh, I hope that's not thunder. Okay, this is, by the way, our largest event, I believe. Gary can correct me. I believe this is our largest event to date. So congratulations to all of you for coming out to celebrate Machina Stone with all of us. Esty's trying to skip her speaking part, so she's not going to do that. 
We're going to actually show the promotional video and the DJ Ralph video, like I told you before, right after this when it gets a little darker. So we're going to go into DJ Ralph. short thoughts. The celebration of 50 years has a place in our spiritual and social lexicon. The Shnat HaYuvel, or Jubilee, Jubilee year, arrived after seven Shemitah cycles, or 49 years as a crown jewel in the fabric of the society that was built here in Eretz Yisrael. The Yovel year was marked by three unique distinctions from a standard Shemitah year. Number one, the shofar was sounded throughout the land to herald the beginning of the year, not on Rosh Hashanah, but on Yom Kippur. Servants are freed, even those that had previously chosen an indentured lifestyle, and all portions of land, nachalot v'achuzot, were returned to their original owners. Both of these suggest a longing towards a just society, one which is socially and economically rooted in equality, shared wealth, and what we call at Camp Stone, shivyon. The name Yovel is taken from the shofar itself. As the only other use of the word in the Torah is the reference to the shofar sounded at Har Sinai that is called a Yovel. Bimshoch HaYovel Hemayalu Bahar. There it symbolizes the sound of the shofar that accompanied the giving of the Torah and the revelation of the Ribbon Olam. Our associations with the Yovel are absolutely supposed to draw us back to Har Sinai. Our celebration together now on Sukkot is also reminiscent of the Hakel ceremony. The gathering of people of all ages in perhaps the outskirts of Yerushalayim on Sukkot after Shemitah year, fine this isn't, in order to reaffirm our connection to the Brit was a powerful multi-sensory experience. It was intended to reach every member of Am Yisrael, men, women, and children. An even more unique occurrence was in the Hakel ceremony after the Yovel year when freed slaves were included as well. It too was intended to draw us straight back to Ma'amad Har Sinai. The psukim about this are very explicit. Hakel et ha'am ha'nashim v'nashim v'ataf v'gercha asher b'sharecha l'ma'an yishmu v'lema'an yomadu v'yiru et Hashem alokechem is the mitzvah of Hakel. Gather the nation together, everybody, so that everyone will hear and learn to fear Hashem and practice the Torah. The description of Har Sinai in Sefer Dvarim, the Pasuk also says, Sefer Dvarim makes it absolutely clear that our gathering at Sukkot each time is intended to recreate the original gathering at Sinai. Can you even imagine a better tochnit? This is experiential education at its finest. Imagine the Roshe Ida working in the Misrad, now relocated to Harabai. How are we going to make lightning that you can hear and thunder that you can see? What are the most important messages we want the campers to remember? What supplies will we need? Will Walmart have them or will we have to get them from Cleveland? Can Ungers make us mini Har Sinai hi-hats? Or maybe Papa Melech could. Or maybe the Mitbach can make a Har Sinai cake as large as Har Sinai itself. Both the Shnat HaYovel and the Mitzvah of Hakel symbol highlight the necessity of using multi-sensory experiences and symbols. This recreation of Ma'amad Har Sinai suggests that a personal, intimate connection is the best and most powerful form of education. We are reminded of our most important values and of the beliefs that anchor us and stabilize us. The goal of these events was to draw strength and inspiration from the intensity of these moments and propel each member of Am Yisrael toward an even better future in the years ahead. So too on Machal. Just kidding. There is nothing more sacred than the work we do at camp. Every minute of every day for 28 days, times two, is devoted to creating a holistic experience to help each child connect to her past and determine his future. An awareness of God, of nationhood, 
of belonging, of responsibility, are palpable and present. We are, with great intentionality, recreating moments from our history, so each member of our community can absorb their beauty, their meaning, and their lasting message, and enable that message to propel his personal growth and transformation. The campers and staff are anchored and inspired and re-inspired time and time again from the meaningful experience this camp provides, and that engagement should propel forward the growth of the coming year. We should all be blessed to participate in meaningful social and spiritual experiences that connect us to Am Yisrael, to Eretz Yisrael, and to Torah Yisrael, and ensure our continuity in the chain of the Jewish people. Okay, and now it's time for Celebrity Machina Trivia. Okay. Okay, let's bring it in one more time. Machina Stone, check it out. Three, one, two, three. Here we go. Baruch Hashem, this past summer, we had 485 campers first session and 465 campers second session, and over 275 staff each session. The total number of people impacted by camps on this past summer was over 1,500 people, and that is because of all of you. So, you can imagine what the Chad Arochel is like on Shabbat and during Sudash Lishit. Machina trivia is now crazy. Hundreds of children screaming out answers to questions all at the same time. And we've come a long way. Um, someone, actually an old and close friend of mine, reminded me that when I was a young child in the 80s, I gave away my age, they would give out ice cream to everyone that got the right answer. So they would go around the small circle of campers at Sudash Lishit, and everybody who answered correctly would get an ice cream. Um, that is impossible um, in the current environment. And so we will continue doing Machina trivia the way that we do it. Um, at Camp Stone, because tradition is everything, and so we're going to do some here tonight. Only we aren't giving out Magnum Bars, we're giving out limited edition t-shirts that we were selling at Stoneware. They're somewhere. Yeah, they're somewhere. Do we have the t-shirts? Do we have the t-shirts to throw to people? Okay. Okay, everyone say it with me. Machanet trivia is integral to the future of the Jewish community. I couldn't hear you one more time. Machanet trivia is integral to the future of the Jewish community. Amazing. Okay. The first question comes from Arye Halivni, although he is always he will always be Eric Weisberg to me. My Rosh Moshava back in 1992. Where is Eric? Arye, where are you? Are you? Yes, back there. Thank you, sir. Okay, here's the question. Thank you. What was Yassi? T-shirt. Give that man a T-shirt. What was Yassi Sawson's wife's brother's wife's brother's wife's brother's wife's brother's job in Camp Stone? Think about that. Yes. Although, who was he? Does somebody have any? Okay, do one more time with me. Wife's brother, Yossi Sassen's wife is. Okay, wife's brother, wife's brother, wife's brother, wife's brother. Who is that person and what was the job at Camp Stone? Okay, he said Rosh Pugel, we'll give it to him. This is the answer, Miriam Sassen, it was Flank. Shoal Flank, Tamar Flank, Weisberg, Eric Weisberg. Then Erica Weisberg, Goldberg, which is Michael Goldberg, Esther Goldberg, Feigenbaum, and her brother, of course, Svi Feigenbaum, who Jim still talks about as the current Rose Pluga, although he was Rose Pluga many years ago. But for Jim, 1975 is 2018. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, here we go. The next question is from Sharon and Alan Green. Where are they? Sharon and Alan Green, are you here? Yes, excellent. Okay, here's the question. Okay, Alan Green, the first Rosh Machal for the first question. In 1973, Machach at Moshe Ayo. Alan, you're here. Excellent, Alan Silverman from Moshe Ayo is here. In 19, also originally, of course, from Camp Stone people. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, in 1973, Machach at Moshe Ayo came to Camp Stone for second session. What shave it was it? And what happened to all of their shoes that session? That is the question. What shave it came to Camp Stone in 1973? And what happened to their shoes? That is the correct answer. Shave it, Shuva. And what happened to their shoes? That is correct. Excellent guess. They were thrown into the Agam. Thank you. Well, no. To be fair, they weren't thrown into the Agam. They were put in boats adrift in the Agam for people to retrieve afterwards. 
And therefore, Alan Silverman, you'd have to agree, this was the first successful inter-camp raid in camp history. It was one camp raiding another. Okay. The next question comes from Yehuda and Adina Rothner, Roche Moshava in 1986-87, and of course the directors of Camp Stone for 20 years. There was one weekend, it was the summer of 2008, I figured it out, okay, that Camp Stone set a record. Not the best record, there were four broken bones on the same Shabbat. Now here, everybody's fine, everyone's fine, don't worry, okay? Okay, but here's the tricky part. Only three children of the four broken bones, only three children went to the hospital. What happened? Someone broke two arms. Yes. What? Two arms. He jumped and broke two arms. He jumped and broke two arms. Thank you. He jumped and broke both arms. That is the answer. That. Oh, no. She also gets a t-shirt. Okay, yes. It was. Ethan Weiser broke both of his arms, but he's fine now. Jacob Weiser. Sorry. Oh, my God. Jacob Weiser. Thank you. And in fact, he just finished Sahal here in Israel. He's 100% fine. There we go. Okay. And that is, we are not looking to break that record in the future. That's just to, 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 just to be on record for that as well. Okay. The next question comes from Jay Neustadter. Where is Jay Neustadter? Excellent. Thank you, Jay. Rosh Mosh, 1988. Okay, here's the question. Who was the Rosh Malachiyad in the late 1980s whose creative projects for Tofni included having campers make voodoo dolls of the Rosh Mosh, complete with actual hairs from the Rosh Mosh's head to make the magic work. Who was the Rosh Malach Yad, ladies and gentlemen? Come on. It was not you. Go ahead. Did someone feed you the answer? Okay, yes, the answer is Brian Bendis, a famous artist for Marvel movies now. You can give them both t-shirts, excellent, okay. All the way in the back. We need a t-shirt cannon here. Need, does anybody have a, a t-shirt cannon from the Cavs games? Okay. Okay, two more questions, here we go. The next question from Sharon Weiss Greenberg, Roche Mosh, 2007, 2008. Where is Sharon Weiss Greenberg in the house? I'm looking around. Sharon, she's here somewhere, okay. Here's the question. There is a building behind the Mistrad. All of you know what it is. What is it right now, people? Thank you, it's the music room, excellent, okay. Now, prior to that, it was the Tofnit Shack, and prior to that, when I was on Seven, it was the Tsevet Moadon. And we'll leave it at that. Thank you, Naftali, for that look. Okay, what was it before the Tsevet Moadon? What was it before the Tsevet Moadon? No. It was the Baby Trash. That is correct. Give that man a, a T-shirt. Okay. We need more T-shirts to throw to people. This is lame otherwise. Okay. Here we go. Last question. It is from Lisa Newmark Jacob, who is the director in 1994 and 95, who is currently the director of alumni relations and the summer office manager at Machana Stone, part of our team. Here's the question, people. Name at least five foods that have been used for Color War Breakout. The answer spans three decades and may require family participation. We all know about broccoli. What you got? Blintzes is also correct, yes. Blintzes and broccoli, what else we got? Yes, Coke, yes. Raisin Bran. Thank you, Raisin Bran, good. Okay, excellent. And the last one? We've got broccoli, we've got Raisin Bran, we've got Blintzes, we got Coca-Cola. What about that time that we did what? Yes, strawberry ice cream. We poisoned the strawberry ice cream. We didn't actually poison anything. I was a camper, wasn't responsible. But the strawberry ice cream was tainted for color break. Excellent, thank you. Okay, give Bryna a t-shirt, please. Thank you very much. She got all five of them. Excellent, great job. Okay, thank you all for participating in what was really, frankly, a typical um, episode of Machina Trivia and Machina Stone. Okay.
Okay, a couple of people that we want to acknowledge in the crowd. It was really... It was really fun to prepare for this event because we kept reflecting on how many people are here in Israel to celebrate who have been impacted by camp and continue to have such love and warmth towards this place that helped to form them. Though we surely were and are still a relatively small North American summer camp, there is no question that we have impacted the North American Aliyah. Nefesh Benefesh should be giving us royalties. And I do wish I had more pull with Tzahal. We'll send you so many soldiers. Just give me a little help with staffing. <laughs> the number of our graduates who inspired by religious Zionism and B'nai Kiv ideology and many mentors and person personal examples they met while in camp made Aliyah to serve as Chayalim, B'not Sherut, build communities, lay roots, and raise children here is truly a realization of the words of the Nevi'im. We stoners are surely a part of the miraculous return to our land that we are fortunate enough to see with our own eyes. Each summer, when speaking to Benot Sherut and Israelis, who have the opportunity to come join us at camp, we remind them of the power that they have to inspire children toward Aliyah. I am moved to tears every time when we recount the number of families who have made Aliyah each year because of the inspiration that they received at Camp Stone. Now, having arrived, we can look around and celebrate so many who are a part of the story of Camp Stone in the last 50 years. I'd like to take a moment to appreciate those with us here tonight who have made the magic happen for the last 50 years. There are some here amongst us who were campers as early as 1969. If that applies to you, please raise your hand high in the air. Yes. Pretty amazing. There are also many amongst us who meant our spouses at Camp Stone. If that applies to you, please raise your hand high in the air. If you worked at camp in any leadership position, ranging from Rosh Mikbach to Skan Rosh Teva, not saying anything bad about that job, from a Rosh Machal to a Rosh Moshava, please raise your hand high in the air. Raise your hands in the air. Hundreds, if not thousands, have learned leadership, mentoring, responsibility, and have gained confidence in their own power by serving in these leadership roles. Anyone who has been a Skan or a Rosh Moshava, please raise your hand high in the air. Skan or Rosh Moshava. We speak to our Rosh Moshava every summer on the cusp of the arrival of the Chanichim with all of Tzavet present. And we remind them that the service, their service as a Rosh Moshava is a badge of honor they carry with them forever. That their commitment to Camp Stone Jewish education and changing the world has undoubtedly had a profound impact on hundreds of Jewish lives. Our bracha for you is that each time that you've served in a leadership capacity since, since Camp Stone, you have reflected affectionately and with pride in your time there as Rosh Moshava. Okay, let's bring it in one more time. Check it on three. One, two, three. For the first three decades of camp's existence, it primarily serviced the Midwestern United States and was supported and operated through Cleveland, Ohio. Those associated with it felt warmth and love, but its reach was limited. Yehuda and Adina Rothner became the directors in 1997 and one was transformed. Yeah. of their leadership, CAMP became an internationally recognized and renowned organization, where both the numbers and educational impact were felt in unprecedented ways. CAMP was truly put on the map, where now, the middle of nowhere became the most hallowed and sought out grounds outside of Medina Israel. Secondly, Yehuda and Adina inspired a generation of empowered, motivated, and committed Jewish leaders. Those of us who were honored to work with them in the highest level positions in CAMP felt that we could do anything to change the world. And camp was our laboratory, our playground to do so. Seeing the numbers of us, many of whom are here, who have found our way to Israel and continue to transform the face of this generation of international jury is astonishing. Yaakov and I worked with the Rothners for the first five years they were directors and we were personally forever grateful for truly inspiring us and creating a lifelong bond. 
All of us are indebted to them for their years of leadership of camp and are proud of their commitment to transforming the educational system in Medina Israel through their work at Kfar Hanor Adati and Kfar Hasidim. Our work continues at camp with a small and deeply committed full-time year-round staff. In Cleveland, Randy Mashmore works tirelessly in the office as the registrar to ensure that as many children as possible can benefit from a summer spent at camp. Our bookkeeper, Stacy Fanning, works diligently to ensure that our business is conducted in a timely and professional manner. At camp, Jim Black retired this year after 45 years of committed service. Brian Olson coordinates the efforts of our maintenance and facility, facility staff led by Ruben and Mose. And don't worry, Bruce and his new dog, Ralph, are still keeping an eye on the place. Woo! The summer office and many year-round tasks are enthousi enthusiastically handled by Lisa Newmark Jacobovitz. Lisa, herself a former director, brings warmth, a deep and unwavering love for camp, and excellent skills to our organization, and is a wonderful partner to us. Additional shout out to her for bringing this event to life. Lisa. She is. Camp Stone would simply not exist without the unwavering support of the Saperstein Stone Weiss Foundation. From the time Irving Stone purchased Camp Deer Run and it became Camp Stone in 1969, the Weiss family has demonstrated commitment to ensuring the continuity of this project. Our partnership with the Weisses, with the entire family, but particularly worthy of note here, Mr. Mori and Mrs. Judy Weiss, and our honorees tonight, Gary and Hildy, has been one of deep appreciation and respect. Their kindness, generosity, and trust are gifts that enable us to be messengers in this joint mission. On behalf of all of us here tonight, we are full of gratitude for what you have enabled for the last 50 years. We hope and pray that you are blessed with the love and the ability to do so for the next 50, at least. Okay. In Cleveland, this past Labor Day, we honored Maury and Judy Weiss for their 50 years of commitment to Camp Stone. It is only fitting that here in Israel, we also honor their children, Gary and Hildy, Weiss for their immeasurable contribution to Camp Stone. And no, Hildy, this is not a subtle aliyah hint, just a recognition of how central Israel is to your identity and Yiddish kiting commitment to Israel. I knew you'd worry about that, and so I put it in. Okay. Uh, everyone. Okay. Okay. Now. Gary's never actually going to catch up to his parents because his first summer in camp was 1970. So really, he's celebrating four, 49 years. Or, for those of you who've already figured it out, to be more precise and slightly more technical, he's actually celebrating 50 years, and the rest of us are celebrating 51 years. But who's counting? Okay. All joking aside, what we are really celebrating here is not the financial generosity of Gary and Hildy or the extended Weiss family. That has been significant and extremely impactful in its own right. Today we are really celebrating Gary and Hildy's personal qualities as extremely fine individuals and people with genuine generosity of spirit and over overflowing love for Camp Stone. Our personal friendship with Gary and Hildy dates back decades. They were at our wedding, they were instrumental in us in our move to Cleveland and by our side at each stage of our transition into this role in camp. We always felt unwavering love and support and a full-on safety net. Our friendship has broadened and deepened over the years, and they are with us in every way to be able to vent, to laugh, to cry. They provide all of that. Countless phone calls, emails, dinners, developing new ideas and direction together, or just a place to stay. They always open their home to me and countless others, and for all of B'nai Kiva and Camp Stone. They never, ever say no. They always say yes, and they don't protect any of their personal space. It's really a remarkable thing. And those acts of kindness are markings of individuals that genuinely care about those around them and share in the love for the causes they support. 
So, as a small token of appreciation, we at Camp Stone had this Kiddush Cup made for your home here in Israel. Okay. There are two phrases written on this Kiddush Cup. The first is from Divrei Hayamim, Perak Chavtet Pasuk Yitzayin, Biyosher Levavi Nadav Tikol Eila. Okay, Chronicles 29.17. The context there, of course, is David HaMelech. He's talking about the building of the Beit HaMikdash. And what does he say? Well, he's amassed all this wealth, tremendous wealth, gold and silver. He's able to fund the project. That they've figured out. But money comes and goes. And that alone really isn't enough for the project and ultimately for the dedication. Because the wealth, the wealth that he amasses, all the Mephorshim point out about that pasuk, right, it's not really his anyway. He amassed it, but it was given to him and it was acquired partially through the hand of God. So what can David HaMelech give to dedicate this Beit HaMikdash? Well, the answer is himself, right? His genuine commitment with a full heart. Once he has pledged that to the project, then he's in. The Beit HaMikdash can then be built. With Yosher, with sincerity, he gave. From the word Yashar, straight. In order to give, you have to, willing, you have to be willing to sacrifice. Ultimately, giving a portion of yourself to someone or something else is a sacrifice. We all know this in our own personal lives with family members, relationships, spouses, children. What is so fitting about this pasuk for Gary and Hildy is that it mirrors how they give to Camp Stone. And not everybody knows this about them. They give with true sincerity and generosity of spirit. They give themselves to Camp Stone. The second phrase in the Kiddush Cup is Kivanaf Shenuhu. It's the refrain in what is now the Camp Anthem, a song we sing each week on Shabbat, written years ago by Ruth Jaffe and Ellie Silver. In a few moments, we will premiere this DJ Rafi video featuring this song. So why do Gary and Hildy give of themselves? Because Machana Stone is in their hearts and their souls. They commit themselves to camp because they believe in the power of camp for the future of the Jewish people. Mazel tov, mazel tov, and now I call upon Gary and Hildy to say a few words. Hey, hold on, how do we get through? <laughs> this kiddush <laughs> um, You know, and the other part is that listening to all those qualifications, let's see, people who met at Camp Stone, we didn't meet at Camp Stone, we never worked at Camp Stone, we never were Roche Shakespeare camps, we really never did anything at Camp Stone. <laughs> but okay, we'll get to that. First, I, we're really just humbled. I, Okay. Really, this honorary is not about us. I can't tell you how much I really, I really touched by, by being honored, but the honor is really to all of you. Our kids would not be who they are today, really, if it wasn't for what they gained at Camp Stone. I gotta tell you, like, almost 30 years ago, right after we got married, Remember, Camp Stone in those days had about a hundred kids, and I'm not exaggerating. And they were really good. At, they were taught. There were talks about selling the camp. I mean, how do you run a camp for a hundred kids? Today we've got over a hundred kids in each end up. But how do you run a camp for a hundred kids? And that was almost in two sessions combined. And we said, there's no way you can take that away from our children. We didn't have kids at the time. But where's Nancy? I remember Harry Newmark. Whatever. My dad went to Harry and I and says, look, if you want this for your kids. Get involved, do something, make a difference, and really, it's not, it's all the work we did is nothing compared to what we got out of camp. Uh, we got a camp as campers, we both went to camp though at different times, um, and what our kids got out of camp, it's tremendous that, you know, thank God today three of our kids are living here, and where's the other, I don't want to put pressure on you, but God willing, the fourth is here, so. 
Um, a lot has changed over the 50 years. Um, where's Bennett? I saw Bennett Campbell's here. Ah, okay, so to give you examples, my first summer of camp was 1970. We had two kids in our bunk, Bennett Campbell and I. That was the entire bunk. Two kids. And if you think that's embarrassing, Bennett brought today, do you want to pick it up, this is hysterical. We had two counselors for two kids. And at the end of the month the camp, they gave you an award for best camper. <laughs> so we both got an award from each of our, from each of our counselors. He still has the award. <laughs> My kids would tell you I threw that out ages ago. <laughs> Today we're, God willing, this coming summer going to be building our second pool at Camp Stone. But when we went to Camp Stone, there was no such thing as a swimming pool. We swam in that lake. In our days, the big activity for Arctic Craft was making lanyard. We would make these box stitches, whatever, and everybody was happy with lanyard. Today there's glass blowing and, and, all, and you know, all kinds of things. In our days, the kids didn't even wear a harness to go down the Omega. I don't know what people were thinking. How many broken bones there were. Um, you know, you're talking about color breakouts with food. You know, broccoli. They tell broccoli. Whatever. In our days, they would kidnap a kid and scare the entire camp and tell that a kid has been kidnapped. Or one year, they told us that a terrorist was coming. And they, they came in with guns on the front row, though. So really, a lot has changed in camp over the years. Um, you know, my grandfather started camp 50 years ago. It was really based on my parents who met at the predecessor of camp, so it was Camp Shore. There was another camp in Indiana that was run by Young Israel of Cleveland. And they had met at Camp Shore. And when Camp Shore, they didn't own the camp, they leased the camp. And Cam Shore was in total disarray with the owners, like, listen, for the one dollar lease that you give me each year, I'm not going to go put money into this. So camp, you know, Young Israel was out of the camp. They needed to find a camp. I remember being six years old and going with my dad to go visit the grounds of camp. So I pleaded with him, let me go to camp the first year. He's like, no, you're too young. Bennett got to go. He was saying same age as me, but whatever. I still haven't gotten over that yet. <laughs> But well, i got to tell you, my grandfather, there was nothing that pleased him more than going to Camp Stone every summer. Every summer, you would, I mean, as a kid, I remember like I was like nine years old, they told me, listen, you're going to have to do Anim Samiro because he's coming to camp for Shabbos and you've got to do Anim Samiro. And he would come every other weekend. Gail would say, he lived in the infirmary. There was, the infirmary was like Lisa and Nancy's office. That was the infirmary. He used to have a bed there, and he would sleep there. He brought a salami, though. Remember the salami? He brought it. But every single summer, he went to Camp Stone. There was nothing in the world that he saw. I got to tell you, the last summer before he passed away, he couldn't travel anymore. He was already Leah and her were 90 years old. The doctor said, listen, you can't go sit in the car for two and a half hours. He goes, but I've got to go visit camp so he comes to me. He goes, Gary, get a helicopter. We're going to camp. He goes, I can't miss a summer from going to camp. And honestly, there was nothing that, what, that he loved more than was about going to camp. Now, in his wildest dreams, he would never, ever believe what has gone on with camp over the last 50 years. Um, and what's going on here today, and it's not just the number of campers that we've had at camp, but it's the impact that camp has had on, on Am Yisrael, and Eretz Yisrael, and, and Torah Yisrael. I mean, the number of families that have made Aliyah, and look at all of you here today, 700 people that came to this event, and they're all people that are living here in Israel, and they're all alumni of Camp Stone. But over those 50 years, camp, you know, as we talked about, it was a wonderful camp. It was great going there as a kid. It was fun. But it really wasn't until Yehuda and Tina and Nancy took over back in the, 90, the late 90s. They really transformed that camp. I mean, they worked day and night. I mean, you know, thank God it's, you know, Yaakov and Essie are here now. But in those days, it was, you know, we only had 100, 200 kids. We were excited when 300 kids showed up to camp. Thank God today there's, you know, we're getting close to 1,000 kids at camp. But as I was talking about how things have changed so much at camp, 
one of the things that we've done, we've tried to do at camp, is make sure that they had the same flavor of camp that was there when we were kids, that everybody knew each other, that everybody was friends. Friendship was the most important thing, and that everybody would know each other's name. We don't want the camp to grow so big that you're just a number in camp. We want it that it's a friendly place the way it was when we were growing up. So really, I want to just thank the people that put this together today. Lisa, I'm sorry, Joel, I was called Lisa Newmark, but Lisa Newmark to Kobowitz. Um, Anne, Yako Vanesti, Dodja, and Gail Engelhart for putting all this together. And really, from the bottom of our hearts, I thank Nancy, Yehuda, and Dina for everything that they did at camp to, to make it to what it is today. Yako Vanesti, the tireless work that they do. Every single day, it's not just the emails, just it's the WhatsApps. Holy cow, he sent WhatsApps every day. I get a WhatsApp by the ten loads. Really, thank you so much for honoring us. And really, by honoring us, we're really honoring all of you. Because it's really all of you that make a difference every single summer at camp. Whether you were a camper, you were a staff member, or now the fun part is you guys are sending your kids to Camp Stone. As a second generation, God willing, there should be many more. Thank you so much. Okay, and now, without further ado, we're going to show a video. Let me give you a little context before we hit play. Here we go. See two videos back to back. Now it's dark enough. We have figured this out. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just looking for a couple of notes on this. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So. Okay, so this is a brand new promotional video. It just got finished last night, actually. Um, how about a round of applause for Brian Spector, who was in camp for two weeks filming. I don't know where he is. Um, he's amazing. He was a camp for two weeks, second session. And basically the idea, see, when we go on, when I go on the road and we do the whole road show and you, and you do open houses, parents often ask about camp and they ask you what goes on at camp and they want to know, you know, what's a day in the life. They like to visit camp, that doesn't happen. But here's what we can do. We can show you pictures of camp. And now we actually have a video which, it, it sort of mirrors a daily schedule, so to speak. And the idea that we had was, let's put something together which gives you a wonderful view into a day in the life of camp and helps people to understand what camp is all about. So, that is what we did and we are excited to premiere it here for the first time tonight. Um, and if you're with me on the road, you're welcome to travel with me and we can watch it 22 more times. Okay. Um, yes, and here we go. That audio? Audio? Just messing with the audio. Yanni, go, Yanni, go, just go. I only use Max. 